Solving General Chemistry Problems Electrochemistry A molecular species is said to be oxidized when the atoms involved give up some of their electrons. The term oxidized goes back to the early days of chemistry when scientists recognized the chemical changes that occurred when something such as a metal would react with oxygen. Over time we came to realize that because of oxygen's large electronegativity, that usually meant the other atoms lost electrons to the oxygen, which now is quantified by having an increasing oxidation number. The species other than oxygen was oxidized. An opposite process would be when some species picked up electrons from another atom. Acquiring additional electrons is equivalent to having that species oxidation number decrease, since electrons are negatively charged. This reduction in an atom's oxidation number has come to be known simply as reduction. There are several common mnemonics to remember how oxidation and reduction relate to the loss or gain of electrons. One is Leo the lion says grr. Leo stands for lose electrons oxidation, while grr is gain electrons reduction. Now over time it is better to understand the chemical principles involved rather than committing them to memory via a mnemonic trick. However, such memory aids can be useful when you are starting into the field. In any chemical reaction in which there is such an exchange of electrons, these two processes, oxidation and reduction, must always occur together. If something is being reduced, then something else must be being oxidized. The electrons that come from some place must also go to some place. Since reduction must always be accompanied by an oxidation, we refer to such reactions as reduction oxidation or redox reactions for short. Every chemical process involves the movement of electrons and atoms. That is the essence of chemical transformation. Some reactions, however, involve a significant reorganization of electrons, so much so that it is appropriate to see the atoms involved as changing their oxidation state and we analyze these reactions in terms of redox processes. There are plenty of reactions that are analyzed differently. Acid-base reactions, for instance, focus on the exchange of protons rather than electrons. Single and double replacement reactions and complexation reactions focus more on the nuclei involved than the moving electrons. A lot of organic synthesis focuses on the reorganization of atoms and electrons without the change of oxidation state. But many processes are best studied as redox processes. Such a study always requires being able to write down a balanced chemical equation. Balancing chemical equations that are not redox in nature just requires keeping track of the atoms involved and making sure that they are balanced on both sides. Monitor for the conservation of mass and balance by inspection. For example, ethylene burns in oxygen and is converted to carbon dioxide and water. By inspection, we see the two carbon atoms in ethylene, so there must be at least two molecules of carbon dioxide. Also, there are four atoms of hydrogen in ethylene, so there must be at least two molecules of water. Counting up the oxygen atoms on the product side, we get four from CO2 and another two from water for a total of six. That means we must have three molecules of O2. Now actually, this is a redox equation, but it is simple enough to be able to balance by inspection. However, in general, balancing redox equations is a bit more difficult because the transfer of electrons is not explicitly written out in the equation. Their transfer is hidden among the changes in oxidation state that is not explicitly obvious. For this reason, we have developed strategies to help with the balancing of redox equations. The transfer of electrons, the reduction in the oxidation processes, has to be analyzed, but once balanced, the electrons all cancel out and the evidence is hidden in the final result. Consider this equation. Copper plus iron 3 plus goes to copper 2 plus plus iron 2 plus. Now first of all, we often leave out the counter ions that are just spectators to the real reaction, but must be there to maintain electron neutrality. For instance, the ionic species could all be associated with nitrate ions or sulfate ions or chloride ions, and the equations could be written out without the specific charges as above. But sometimes it is helpful to focus on the species that are really reacting. Without thinking about electrons, you might be tempted to see the above equation as already balanced. One copper with one copper, and one iron with one iron. The atoms do balance, but the electrons do not. 
Copper is being oxidized and goes from an oxidation state of zero to plus two. It loses two electrons. On the other hand, iron is being reduced from the plus three state to the plus two state. An iron atom only picks up one electron to accomplish this. In order to balance the electron transfer also, two iron atoms must change oxidation state every time one copper atom changes oxidation state. The balanced equation therefore must be copper plus two iron three plus goes to copper two plus plus two iron two plus. You could also see this by counting the charges in both equations. In the first case, without the additional coefficients, there's plus three on the left and plus four on the right. Now that should tell you something is wrong because we must have charge conservation as well as mass conservation. The balanced equation, however, has plus six on the left and plus six on the right. Both mass and charge are conserved and the redox equation is balanced. Now one word of explanation. In general chemistry, we focus our attention on reactions in the gas phase or involving aqueous, that is water as a solvent, solutions. As such, we will always have water available to participate in a reaction as needed. You can add to or subtract it from a reaction as needed to achieve balance. Furthermore, aqueous solutions can either be acidic or basic, wherein we can also use H plus ions or OH minus ions as reactants as needed. Now other situations can arise, but in general chemistry, we will always assume that these reactants are available as needed or as specified. Look at this equation, N2H4, which is hydrazine, plus ClO3 minus the chlorate ion, goes to NO, nitric oxide, plus Cl minus the chloride ion. It can be very difficult to balance a redox reaction by inspection alone, so we rely upon a balancing strategy. We start by splitting the reaction up into what are called half reactions. We separate the reduction portion of the reaction from the oxidation portion. In this way, the electrons can be treated explicitly. This allows us to balance the reduction and oxidation processes separately and then scale them to each other so that they both have the same number of electrons. We then recombine them, canceling the electrons and ending up with the balanced equation. Let's use those steps in this reaction between hydrazine and the chlorate ion. Step one, assign oxidation numbers to all of the reaction participants. Well, the chloride ion is clearly just minus one. Assign minus two to the oxygen throughout. On the product side, the nitrogen must therefore be plus two. In the chloride ion, there's a net charge of minus one. The three oxygens each at minus two produce a net minus six oxidation number. To provide an overall charge of minus one, the chlorine must be plus five. Now here's an example of the halogen not being minus one because of the greater electronegativity of the oxygen. Finally, assign the hydrogens in hydrazine to plus one. They only come up minus one when reacting with various metal atoms. There are four H atoms, which together have four plus oxidation number. The nitrogens must balance this, since the molecule is neutral. There are two of them, so they must have an ox oxidation number of minus two. Separate next the overall reaction equation into the two half reactions. Nitrogen is being oxidized, going from minus two to plus two. Chlorine is being reduced, going from plus five to minus one. The two half reactions are hydrazine goes to NO and chlorite goes to chloride. Step three, balance by inspection the atoms that are changing oxidation state. In this case, it is the N and the Cl atoms. Usually the other atoms are H and O. Now other situations can arise also, but in this step, focus just on the molecules which have atoms that are changing oxidation state. We need to multiply NO by two to balance the nitrogens. The chlorine is already in balance. Nothing changes in the reduction half reaction. Now step four, look at the oxidation numbers that are changing. Now do not look at the charge. Make sure you understand the difference between charge and oxidation state. So we add sufficient electrons to the product side of the oxidation reaction to accommodate the change in oxidation state. Similarly, add sufficient electrons to the reactant side of the reduction half reaction to accommodate that change in oxidation state. I count for stoichiometry, and the electrons now appear explicitly, allowing us to balance the redox processes. 
nitrogen changes from minus 2 to plus 2, so that would take 4 electrons. There are two n atoms, so that requires a total of 8 electrons to accomplish the required change in oxidation state. Chlorine goes from plus 5 to minus 1, so that requires 6 electrons. Make sure you place them on the correct side of the correct half reaction. Think this through very carefully. Step 5. Now look at charge and looking link which includes the charge of the electrons. Balance charge using either H plus ions or OH minus ions. And you can use one or the other. And often an equation will specify the reaction as being acidic or basic, implying the use of H plus or OH minus. If not specified, use H plus. Note in the uh, in some questions the identity of the species uh, is given just to show the explicitly the reaction is to be a particip uh, as a participant. This is just another way of specifying acidic or basic conditions. Now you are trying to balance each half reaction so that it has the same charge on both sides. The charge does not need to be zero, just the same. For the oxidation reaction, the only charge is from the eight electrons. And we'll balance this with H plus ions, so we will add eight of them to the product side. For the reduction reaction, we have a net charge of 7 minus. On the reactant side, minus 1. On the product side, we will add 6 H plus to the reactant side to bring them back into charge balance. Now charge and change in oxidation state should both now be balanced for each half reaction separately. Step 6. Balance any oxygen present by adding water as needed. The two oxygens on NO will need to be balanced by adding two water to the reactant side. Similarly, we must add three water to the product side of the reduction equation because of the oxygens in chlorate. Now, we need to check that each half reaction is separately in balance with respect to each atom and the overall charge. Each should individually be in complete balance now. The last step just done should not only have balanced the oxygen, but the hydrogen should now also magically be in balance. Now confirm this. It is, a, it is probably worthwhile pausing playback to check that you can see this balance in atoms and charge. Now we scale the two half reactions so that they both involve the same number of electrons. Multiply as needed to make them the same. You could look for a common multiplier, or you could always just multiply each reaction by the number of electrons in the other reaction. And then we will cancel any excess in the next step. In this case, we multiply the oxidation reaction by 6 and the reduction reaction by 8. We can perhaps see that we can divide out 2 from these multipliers and multiply by 3 and 4, respectively. That's a good thing to do if you are confident with your numbers and can see it clearly to not make any mistakes. Now, I'll just do the whole multiplication and cancel things in the next step. We have 12 H2O plus 6 hydrazine goes to 12 NO plus 48 electrons plus 48 H plus. And then we, for the oxidation, we also have 48 H plus plus 48 electrons plus 8 uh, chlorate ions goes to 8 chloride plus 24 water. Add the two half reactions to cancel electrons. Cancel any extra H pluses, OH minuses, or water that may be present. Reduce the stoichiometric coefficients to the smallest integers. Confirm that the reaction is balanced for both atoms and charge. Now both reactions have 48 electrons. It is only the electrons that must completely cancel in this step, though other reaction participants may do also. We have 12 water plus 48 H plus plus 6 hydrazine plus 8 chlorate goes to 12 NO plus 8 chloride plus 48 H plus plus 24 water. Now cancel excess water and the H plus ions. That leaves us with 6 hydrazine plus 8 chlorate goes to 12 NO plus 8 chloride plus 12 water. Now reduce the coefficients to the smallest set of integers. In this case, we divide everything by 2, and we obtain 3 hydrazine plus 4 chlorate goes to 6 NO plus 4 chloride plus 6 water. This is the final balanced equation. You can see how difficult this would be to try and balance by inspection alone. Check that each atom type and the overall charge is in balance. Now, 
Here is another example. Balance this equation in acidic media. First, assign oxidation numbers. Plus 7, minus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 3. Now be sure to pause the video at each step to make sure you understand the arithmetic and chemical insight that leads to each of these operations. Separate into two half reactions, the iron 2 plus to the iron 3 plus, and the permanganate to the manganese 2 plus. Balance atoms changing oxidation state. In this case, they're already balanced. Step four, balance changes in oxidation state with electrons. We have to add one electron to the iron equation, and we add five electrons to the manganese equation. Balance uh, charge with H plus ions. The uh, iron reaction is already in balance and for charge, and on the uh, manganese reaction, we add eight H plus to the uh, reactant side. Step six, balance oxygen with water. Again, iron is already in balance, and we add four water to the product side of the manganese reaction. Seven, confirm that each half reaction is balanced for atoms and for charge. Done. Eight, scale reactions so that they both have the same number of electrons. Here we have to multiply the iron reaction by five, so it also has five electrons like the manganese reaction does. Combine the half reactions, cancel electrons and anything else in excess, bring the stoichiometry to the lowest integers, we end up with 8H plus plus 5Fe2 plus plus permanganate goes to manganese 2 plus plus 5Fe3 plus plus 4 water. Okay, let's do one more example. The reaction here is NO2 minus the nitrite ion plus aluminum goes to ammonia plus ALO2, the aluminum dioxide ion. Let's balance it in basic media. This means we have to use hydroxide ions to balance charge in the charge balancing step. First, assign oxidation numbers. Plus three, minus two, zero, minus three, plus one, plus three, minus two. Again, be sure to pause the vid video to make sure you understand each step. Separate into two half reactions. Nitrite goes to ammonia, aluminum goes to aluminum dioxide. Balance atoms that are changing oxidation state. In this case, both are already balanced. Four, balance changes in oxidation state with electrons. We add six electrons onto the uh, reactant side of the uh, nitrite reaction, and we add three electrons to the product side of the aluminum reaction. Balance charge with OH minus, adding seven OH minus in the uh, nitrogen reaction and four OH minus in the aluminum reaction. Balance oxygen with water. Add uh, five water to the nitrogen reaction and two water to the aluminum reaction. Seven. Confirm that each half reaction is balanced for atoms and for charge. Done. Scale the reactions so that they both have the same number of electrons. We, uh, the the, nitro the uh, nitrogen has uh, six electrons already, so we multiply the aluminum by three, by two, in order to get its three electrons up to six electrons. Both reactions now have six electrons, we combine the half reactions to cancel electrons and anything else in excess, bring the stoichiometry to the lowest integers. Nitrite ion plus H2O plus OH minus plus two aluminum goes to two aluminum dioxide plus ammonia. Now electrons must always cancel each other completely. And in this case, seven hydroxide ions cancel, leaving one, and four water molecules cancel, leaving one. It is always a good idea to check the final equation to make sure everything, atoms and overall charge, are still in balance. If anything is not right, go back to the beginning and redo each step in sequence.